and welcome back to News Desk. This is our continuing coverage. We still have maybe one and a half hours to go, and we still have so much more for you to for you to um, get note of. Let's continue with our coverage. And the co-chairpersons of the Joint Parliamentary Select Committee on the election of members to the East African Legislative Assembly will this afternoon table the committee's report in both houses for debate and adoption. KTN News has established that two candidates, one from Jubilee Party and another from the Opposition National Super Alliance, were disqualified after they were found to be still serving as public officers. At the same time, leader of majority in the National Assembly, Aidan Dwale, is expected to move a procedural motion this afternoon, seeking to have Parliament hold a sitting on Thursday morning next week for the purpose of conducting the election of members to the Regional Assembly. Our senior par parliamentary affairs reporter, Patrick Monau, joins us from, us, from Parliament uh, with the latest. Uh, Patrick, as we await for this... Uh, afternoon's event, that is the tabling of that uh, report. What can, more can you tell us about this whole process that really has taken so long? Thank you, Betty. As what is happening now is that uh, both co-chairpersons of the in the National Assembly and in the Senate are just uh, putting up the last finishes to that particular report. Uh, I've just uh, just had at least a, a brief encounter with a co-chair in the National Assembly, that is uh, Meto uh, Ole, uh, Kato Ole Metito, who is also trying to seek his counterpart in the Senate, uh, that is um, uh, Makweni Senator uh, uh, Mutula, 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 Mutula uh, uh, Junior, at least to come and uh, present that tab, uh, that report to the Senate this, uh, uh, this afternoon when the, it, it resumes its sittings at 2.30. Uh, apparently in the Senate, uh, the members of the, the five team from the Senate that were part of this particular Joint Select Committee, uh, four of them have gone to Dar es Salaam uh, to attend the Iala Games which are ongoing in, in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Uh, and so it's only Senator uh, Mutula who is, who is around and is, is the one who is expected to table that report in the Senate this afternoon. But in the National Assembly we have uh, 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 um, Kato Ole Metito, who is, uh, who is present with the who co chair that particular committee, he will be the one who will be tabling that report uh, this afternoon. Uh, but besides that, we've seen that uh, the leader of majority, Aden Duale, will be uh, moving a procedural motion to have uh, the House uh, sit uh, in the morning Thursday next week, or that is December 14th, purposely to elect uh, members to this uh, regional parliament. Uh, Kenya has dragged its feet. Uh, these members were to be in that uh, parliament by June 4th uh, this year, but it dragged, the process dragged. We saw the 11th parliament could not um, elect, they could not, they could not agree on the numbers of members uh, whom, uh, whom MPs will vote for, because that time we saw uh, uh, the opposition called then, and uh, uh, called then uh, did indicate that they were not they were not yielding to uh, in, increase the number of their members to 12 from the, the, the six they had given on that list to allow members to uh, elect. At uh, that time, we saw Jubilee had presented a list of 15, out of which five were to be, to be elected. But uh, code stuck to its guns and said it's only the six who, who had been uh, presented. Uh, those are the ones that uh, MPs were supposed to, uh, to, uh, to vote for. Uh, but this time around with the 11th Parliament, we've seen also the, dynamic, the political dynamics have changed. We now have NASA, but now this time around, NASA, which, which is composed of the former code, uh, code members of Parliament, is now will be supposed to uh, elect uh, four members to that uh, regional parliament, while Jubilee will elect five. And out of, these, uh, five, uh, out of this list, in the Jubilee list of five, they are supposed to have three must be men and two will be women. While on the NASA side, um, out of the four, we expect uh, uh, NASA to elect three men and one must be at least a woman. Also, it, it, when it comes to this election, members of parliament will also ensure that it observes uh, the, the election, uh, the, the, those elections to the regional parliament comply with regional, regional balance. We also have other dynamics like um, uh, uh, special interest groups. We expect maybe to have at least people with disabilities uh, being, and, uh, be, be being elected to that regional parliament and or maybe the, the, the youth. So those are some of the parameters that our members will be looking at as they go through that particular process. But this afternoon, once the report will be tabled, members will have an opportunity to debate it and either adopt and or reject that particular report. So this afternoon, that will be the main business in Parliament this afternoon, both houses. And uh, we expect also, as it, were it, it, as it, it, it was indicated, that uh, two members were, were, uh, were ejected from this particular list. So their names will not be on the ballot papers. The, 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 the the specific, number, the specific members will be known once that, table, uh, that report is tabled in the House, when it now becomes officially available to members. That's when we'll be able to know who 
these two members are who are struck off the, that ballot. But as it were now, uh, Betty, what is happening is that I've seen, I've just walked around and seen uh, those members, the successful members who, are, who, who participated, the 26 will be, will be on the ballot, uh, ballot paper. They are still uh, carrying on with the lobbying. It's still uh, they, are, they are meeting various members, uh, both in the, in the National Assembly and the Senate, trying to convince them to vote to elect them into that uh, regional parliament. That is what is happening. The canvassing is still ongoing and they'll, ha they'll still have until um, that, uh, that morning of, I mean, until uh, uh, October uh, next week, Wednesday, that to lobby around and convince members to be voted into that regional parliament. So that is what is happening now here, here Betty. Before I let you go, um, do we know the kind of agenda that is awaiting, you know, these uh, these uh, members, you know, once the voting has been done? Just looking forward uh, into this process, like I mentioned, really, there has been a delay, really, that has also created some bile between uh, the, the countries in the region. So what agenda are we looking at uh, moving forward after everything now is in place and settled? There were some pending matters at the East African, at East African Legislative Assembly in June. We saw there was that idea where they, they're also discussing matters to do with the, the, pl the plastic menace in the, in the region. And we saw like the countries like Rwanda, they have already put in laws in place to ban plastics. We've seen uh, Kenya has taken, taken cue. They are now also introducing that idea to, 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 to ban plastics. Tanzania had given the plastic manufacturers until August uh, to comply and ensure that uh, there's no more manufacturing of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, use of plastic, uh, plastic bags. In, the, in that country. So it is something that uh, that particular idea to ban plastic is something that uh, has attracted uh, regional attention and also the matter was before the, the, regional, the regional assembly. So we expect uh, these members to come uh, where, where once they get to the house, uh, then they'll be able to look into these particular matters and see that uh, these other countries in the region that have not complied, like maybe say like South, South Sudan and probably also uh, Uganda, they, they comply with this particular law to ensure that uh, uh, Kenya, I mean, uh, the, the region pursues environment uh, friendly uh, legislations. Also, we have uh, this idea to do with um, the, these uh, re uh, regional integration. Uh, this, 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 this idea to have uh, to come up with a, with, with a common market is something that uh, there are certain. Uh, uh, lacunas in, in, in those laws, pieces of legislation, which which need to be to be uh, to, to, to be made uh, to be to be uh, spruced up to ensure that uh, there is a smooth operation of trade across across the, in, in the regional block. There's also that idea to do with the, the political federation. Uh, it's not. It was something that was mooted way back in 2010, but it's not come to fruition because of the the, the pull and push factors. Uh, also, they also will get to know that uh, the, the laws that operate in the, in the region are different. Like, like for the case of the Iala members, in Kenyan case, we have uh, at least an independent, one can be elected as, to, as an independent in parliament, but in other regional, in, in, others, in other member states, it's only political parties. And that's why this law informs the, in the, in the Iala. The law says that uh, parties are the ones that will be elected members to, to, to that regional parliament. That's why we saw the independent candidates who attempted to attempted it, it in Kenya here uh, had a rough time because they could not even uh, get like uh, the signatures of 1,000 members to make them uh, the, to, to make their candidature eligible to pass to this uh, second stage. You are now members of parliament. The both National Assembly and Senate will be electing those to, 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 to join Iyala. So it is, a, it is an intricate matter. But again, besides that, maybe before I, I wind up, uh, Betty, another matter that uh, we will be discussing in the, in the National Assembly and both Senator this afternoon is to do with the composition of committees. We know very well that um, they had the, the Committee on House Rules and Procedure met yesterday. They were looking at those standing orders to change them to ensure that uh, membership is increased, especially those departmental committees, the membership increases from 17 to 19. Uh, because initially in the 11th parliament, the membership uh, at the departmental committees was stood at 29. But uh, the studying orders they reviewed so that in the 12th parliament they were to be 17. Uh, and for the select committee, the membership was to reduce to uh, from 20, uh, I mean, it was to go to, to 20, it was to reduce to 20, from, from the initial in the 11th parliament where it was at, it stood at, at 20, 27 uh, to, to to 17. So those are the things that uh, the minority uh, leader in the National Assembly, John Bard, has been looking at, and they were agreed with the little majority in the National Assembly, Adam Duale, that those, uh, those standing orders need to be changed to allow more members room to be members of, of, of these particular committees, because it is a provision that as a member of parliament, you must be, at least, you must participate in the, in the committees now that we have a presidential system where most of the work is done through committees. And there are complaints in the past that uh, some members, had, it, it appeared that they had been given preferential treatment, they were, they could be, they were, 
in, uh, you could find there were members uh, in either more than uh, maybe two or three committees, and while, while their counterparts were only members, had maybe, maybe a membership in one committee. So this particular increment uh, will, will ensure that at least the 343 MPs get at least a chance to serve in two committees, one departmental committee and another one, uh, a select committee. In the Senate, uh, it's not a, big, a very big deal because the numbers are, are few, 67, and we've seen that in the Senate, only nine members constitute a committee. And in fact, in the Senate, what, what has happened is that, uh, like the National Assembly, where, where many committees are around in the Senate, they tend to merge at least two or three committees into one. So that is the, the scenario that is obtaining, and we've seen that even in the National Assembly, they are grappling with the issue of numbers because 29 is so huge a number uh, to, 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 to the National Assembly. And in case when, when, when we had uh, joint sittings, you could find that now you are dealing with about 58 members uh, to discuss uh, a certain issue. And in, in such a crowd, it really became very difficult to control. And at times, uh, you could find that partisan interests could take center stage and people, members could not really adequately uh, brainstorm over, over issues of national importance. So I think that is what informed uh, these, uh, this idea that the membership in those committees were to be reduced, at least to be scaled down to 17. Uh, but then it appears, OK, even as it was scaled down, it appeared some members might miss out of this particular committee. So it's an attempt, uh, as according to the uh, Deputy Minority Leader, leader uh, uh, John Buddy, what he says is that uh, it's to even out and ensure that members uh, feel uh, accommodated in the committees and they can uh, participate and give, uh, give their best in the committees. They feel that uh, they are qualified and uh, professionally qualified into it. Betty? Thank you very much for that detailed analysis and really what we're going to be looking forward to in the next coming days, starting from this afternoon, uh, Patrick Momo, they're reporting from Parliament. He has been uh, just giving us uh, highlights of uh, that Joint Parliamentary Select Committee report on the election of members uh, to Yala. That report will be tabled this afternoon and uh, we'll be crossing over there at that time to uh, follow through with what's happening. All right, so from that, we want to focus on... Uh, politics here at home. And the National Super Alliance, NASA, has now written to 11 county governments asking NASA governors to provide a venue for the swearing-in of their leader, Raila Odinga, on the 12th of December. In a move seen as a strategy to keep the exact venue a secret from the Jubilee administration, the letters have been sent to counties that approved NASA coalition's people's assembly motion. Chris Sairu has the details. <laughs> With five days to go before the planned swearing-in of NASA leader Raila Odinga, the team mandated to organize the inauguration ceremony has been working round the clock to ensure that the day is a success though they have maintained a high level of secrecy. And in a move seen as a calculated plot to confuse the authorities, NASA has written to 11 counties friendly to the opposition, asking the respective governors to provide a venue for the swearing-in ceremony. The counties include Mombasa, Kilifi, Siaya, Homabe, Busia, Makweni, Kitui, Kisumu, Kakamega, Vihiga, and Migori counties. We say it all by saying nothing at all. Yeah, I think the statement has been put. Uh, the day will come. The Swahili say, Yakuna Aja to Andikia Mate na Wino Upo. So we wait for the day. The same counties have debated and approved a motion to form a People's Assembly that will be mandated to push for constitutional reforms as well as ensure that NASA leader Raila Odinga assumes the presidency. So that, that we intend to do uh, uh, properly to demonstrate that there is no democracy in the world where a leader ascends to the presidency uh, on the strength of the blood of his citizens. During the same day, Kenyans will be marking Jamuhuri Day to mark 54 years of independence. However, police have been put on high alert and reports are that trailer swearing in will not be allowed to take place. The last time that NASA leaders attempted to hold a rally was during the swearing in of President Uhuru Kenyatta. But that rally did not take place as police and NASA supporters spent the whole day in running battles. A seven-year-old boy was shot dead during the running battles in Pipeline Estate. 
The planning for the swearing-in comes only two days after the arrest of NASA strategist David D. in a move that NASA leader Raila Odinga termed a wider scheme by the government to intimidate Kenyans fighting for electoral justice. These are basically designs to try to intimidate and blackmail the people of Kenya. Mr. David D. has committed no crime. And we know why Mr. David Ndi is being harassed here. And we know that the matter is not ending with Mr. David Ndi. I know that other people are going to be arrested. According to the NASA strategist, they will use Article 1 of the Constitution, which states that the people may exercise their sovereign power either directly or through their democratically elected representatives. But according to political analyst Herman Manyora, Raila Odinga is setting up his supporters to clash with the police. When somebody or people fear you and they cannot touch you, they then direct this anger to your followers. Don't occasion harm to your people. By wanting to be sworn in, especially given that there isn't much you could do or you can do after being sworn in anyway. Unless there's something you know we don't know. That swearing will count for nothing except the lives that will be lost the property that will be destroyed. It still remains unclear where the venue of the swearing-in will be. Chris Dairo, KTN News, Nairobi. Well, I guess they will continue to keep us guessing. All right, so we'll take a break here on News Desk, but we're coming back. We still have an hour uh, to go. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We have quite a number of other top stories that we're looking at. We'll be speaking to our reporters on the ground, including Elvis uh, Kosge in Eldoret. Uh, remember that uh, finally the county funds have been uh, dispersed. The Treasury has been given that go-ahead to disperse 77 billion uh, shillings. So we'll be getting varied um, views from the ground from our reporters reporters apart from other stories that we're looking for uh, we're looking at all right so let's take a break i need of course some water let me do that we'll be back this is ktn news 